My name's Steve and this is the latest uh, video blog. Uh, it's called Portugal Utopia and it's our journey, me and my partner. Uh, our journey in buying a place in Portugal. Uh, the place has been bought about four years ago, but due to the COVID restrictions, we haven't been able to get over there much recently to do it up. We're both workers. We've got 18, 18 months to go before we retire. And we're desperate to, to get over there because Britain at the moment is such a horrible place to live, I'm afraid to say. British born and bred, but I'm not happy the way it's going in England at the moment. And um, our dream is to get over to Portugal with some sun on our back. Um, we bought a place a few years back and uh, we're attempting to do it up. It's an old doer upper. Um, five, six years ago, it wasn't even on the horizon. Um, but um, it became a reality and, and now we're nearly into desperation state with it. We just cannot wait to get over there and get sorted out. Cannot wait to retire. Um, I've been on this earth 64 and a half years and I've worked most of it um, and I've about had enough of it to be honest with you but we soldier on. Um, it'll come soon enough to keep telling me uh, but I'm desperate to get over there and get this like I say get the sun on the backs all our bones are aching now um, winter's winter's approaching here uh, yesterday we had our bonfire um, it'll soon be armistice and then it'll soon be Christmas and then that's it isn't it we don't know when we can get out to Portugal again but um, we're hoping springtime the Covid will sort itself out a little bit better to allow us to travel uh, but if not we've just got to wait you know, it might be another year yet. But we're all in the same boat. We've all got to go along together. We need cheering up. Um, I spend a lot of time on YouTube looking at sunnier climes because um, in England, you're just trapped indoors all the time. Uh, our Portugal dream or utopia, as we call it, Portuguese utopia, we've named the channel. It's purely a personal uh, chronological order in how I went about getting the place and thought process going into it and some of the problems along the way the ups and downs along the way but i do want to get it all logged somehow and uh, rather than just a load of photos and clips on my cam uh, on my computer um, i am attempting to put it in some sort of chronological order to, so it makes sense uh, and if you enjoy it come along with me um, when I get used to the idea of using this YouTube channel properly, um, I'll be able to put things up like subscribe and like, but I'm a bit of a fossil when it comes to IT. Um, so this one that I'm making now, it might not go out, it might not be aired for another month till I try and attempt to get it right. But you have to start somewhere, so I'm gonna do that. I've made a little slideshow presentation, which I'm gonna put on the end of my little speech at the front here. And hopefully if you enjoy it, or parts of it uh, by all means get in contact or criticize it but hopefully only good criticism we don't we don't need a lot of aggravation in our lives at the moment do we any of us um, so I uh, sit back and enjoy the bits I've got on there if it all makes sense I'm sure it'll all come to fruition um, by the end of the video um, I should be tweaking it as I go along a little bit but a lot of this will probably cut out but We'll see how it goes anyway, okay? And we'll talk to you another day, okay? Thanks for watching. Bye. Right, having, having found much pleasure in the countryside and also the town of Lisbon, 
I decided that um, I quite like it here. And this is where the seeds of um, a Portuguese utopia were set. Um, didn't really know at that point whether it was a dream or whether it's just a figment of my imagination, but I thought it's lovely. It would be nice to have some time, time out here if I can. Uh, got back to England and then started thinking about it more and more. Um, a friend had, a friend had got a place in Portugal, and he told me how cheap it was out there, and it got me interested in going to have a look. And that's where the holiday, our first holiday out there was to, to have a look around his property. Well, two. We actually bought two. We went crazy and bought two in a week. Um, and the pictures he showed me were lovely, so I thought, right, I'm going to have a look at this. So we used one of our holidays up going over there and looking around the area and everything. Um, Thoroughly enjoyed it, the experience, even though it rained most of the time when we were there. Um, and we started looking, looking again, see what, uh, see what we could do. Um, the money side of the thing was a bit tight, it still is, we're not rich people by any means. Um, but the price my friend had paid for his made me think, well at the bottom end of the, the ladder there is a potential perhaps. So I had to put the plan into action. Um, I will explain a bit more as we go along. I'm probably in the next video, etc. But the thought was there, and um, I just started doing some homework then about the area on YouTube, etc. And um, anywhere where I could get some information about the best places. Um, and that's really when it kicked off a little bit. We're thinking, well, instead of this being a dream, we can make it into a reality. Um, and it's took a long time to, to do it because I this has been going on for several years even to the degree of taking a bit of a gamble and starting gathering bits together because I knew if I bought an house it would be a doer upper and it would be a wreck and the poverty of the country the areas where I wanted to buy in or could afford to buy in were usually um, derelict places run down basically because the poor people of the country who owned them had got no money, they were scratching a living um, and a lot of them, the reason why you can pick them up cheaply is because they are run down and mainly because the young ones don't want to take on the responsibility uh, and the upkeep of a derelict bit, a derelict house basically a lot of them were. Uh, they moved, they get educated, they move to the cities or over to England or wherever and they don't want to keep it on and sadly a lot of the homesteads are just crumbling. I think the Portuguese authorities, etc., enjoy or encourage people to come over there now because it, it gets the villages and the houses and some economy back into the country, albeit by foreign people. Luckily, the Portuguese seem to enjoy the company or at least tolerate uh, the English people, and I think most of us respect their traditions, etc. Um, so it seemed a good it seemed a good fix because I'd looked at other places but I never really ever thought about anywhere else other than Portugal as a potential retirement home or an holiday f from home. Anyway, we, we move on with the um, the next plan of it, which was, this was all going on without me telling my partner, believe it or not, because I wasn't sure how she felt about it. But it was my dream, whatever happened. I mean, me and my partner were not married. We've been together 18, 20 years, but we're not married. Uh, and certain aspects of our finances are kept, I'm not going to say private or secret, um, but one of the deals we had was that um, we're both working. You buy and run whatever vehicle you want. Um, I've always had cheap runabouts, and the partner has to have something a bit more reliable. But on meeting my partner, I'd already had two Morris Minor cars um, and I thought that is some money that I could put towards my dream. So the plan was to sell the two cars, put that money in the bank and see where see where it left us or where it left me. At this point I didn't tell my partner about it, I just said that I wanted to get rid of them, which was true because we they were costing me money every year but I wasn't particularly having time to enjoy them. Um, I'd got, I've got an elderly mother it at the weekends, I was doing air gardening, etc. We never got out to use the cars to any rallies or shows or anything. So they were just garaged up, cost me money every every year. Um, 
So I said that I would get rid of them because we didn't need them, uh, although my partner didn't believe that I would. Um, I did. I sold one one year, and then I had to wait another year before I managed to sell the other one. So that was two years out of my plan, but all the time it was just at the back of my mind. Um, the next stage on from that was um, going back to the village where my where my friend Kenny had got his houses, and I did promise him that I'd help him with some building work because I just love being over there and I love getting my hands dirty and lugging things about. Uh, so the next stage was visiting Kenny, and at that point, helping him with his house, um, I went back at least twice before um, the opportunity of the house next door, which I eventually bought, was up for sale. We did go looking around the village to try and find the person that owned the house to see whether they wanted to sell it. Uh, but with no one there at all speaking any English and me speaking a very limited amount of Portuguese, we managed to find two sisters in the village uh, whose parents, I believe it was, owned the house before the old boy had died, um, but they wouldn't do anything without the brother. It appears that the man of the house or the male domination over there is still fairly strong that the man has the say, and they don't make any decisions without the brother being there. Um, it appears later on that all interested parties have to be um, together when a decision is made or an offer is made, etc. Um, they did come. I did manage to, again, it was another couple of, at least one if not two more visits to Kenny's and helping him with, again move on with his house a bit that I did eventually get in contact with the right person and they did come and have a visitation and we struck a deal um, and that was the start of me actually owning or us owning the house in Portugal. Um, I will tell you about a bit more about it um, on my next blog if I can get everything up and running properly but again at the moment it's I'm struggling to get all the IT part of it all put together. It is slowly taking place, but what the young'uns do in two seconds takes me about four hours and much headache and much switching off and switching on again with the computer. But, like I say, we will, um, we will attempt to, to make something at least half sensible to get an idea of where we're going with this project or dream or whatever we'd like to call it. Once again, I'd like to thank you for looking and uh, viewing and uh, hopefully be able to carry on with the story a little bit later. Thanks for now.